Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and today I'm joined by Luis Guerra and Michael Moore, and they are going to be talking us through why automatic mixers are key to great sound. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. It takes us about a one to two weeks to get it edited, so please be patient. But when it is ready in about one to two weeks, you can go to shore.com slash training. Um, this webinar will be there. There's also a lot of other great webinars from the past across a lot of different audio topics. So please feel free to go to shore.com slash training and view all of our past audio learning. Second of all, as we go through the session today, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the question pane. If you do not see a question pane, look for a dark gray toolbox with an orange box on it with a white arrow. Click on that little orange box and that should give you access to the questions section. Ask any questions you have, but please be patient because we will be waiting until the end of the session to go through questions. So type in your questions, be patient, we'll get to them at the end. All right, that wraps up all of the boring stuff. Let's get into the good stuff. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, Cheryl. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Luis Guerra. I'm a senior product marketing at Sure, and we're here to talk today about automatic mixing. My coworker, Michael, Michael Moore, will also be uh, helping us out here today. So. Some of the things we'll cover today, what is an automatic mixer, benefits, applications, types, and some special considerations. Um, we try to go from you know basic to more advanced, so if you feel like it's a little bit basic in the beginning, please don't hang up. Uh, we'll try to cover everything else um, as the session goes on. So, what is an automatic mixer? At a very high level, an automatic mixer is an audio processor that manages audio level and overall system gain. Uh, typically designed for speech-only applications. You would not want to use it on your band uh, or anything like that. And uh, also will be most beneficial when multiple microphones are in use. I would say at least four or more. Also, automatic mixers exist as a standalone out of a mixer like an SEMA 10 or an SEMA 20 from Sure, and also uh, they're typically a module inside a DSP audio processor. So just to clarify a few things before we go on, an automatic mixer is not an EQ. It typically does not change tonality on the sound. Uh, it's not a speech gate, uh, meaning that it's you know, if it's not done right, it might be perceived as a speech gate, but it should be much more advanced than that, and it should not sound like a speech gate. And it's also not definitely a bag of ships noise eliminator. Uh, the automatic mixer will try to capture everything that happens in the room, uh, but, you know, with some benefits that we'll, dis we'll discuss uh, shortly. So um, I draw up this uh, conference room, and uh, we're going to be using this for a lot of examples. And also, I draw up what I call the sound view. This allows to see the sound. And although this is not any sort of measurement tool, uh, it's going to be very useful just to show you signal to noise ratio, at the very least. So if we start with this conference room, and we have a person in there that wants to have a meeting and potentially connect to a remote site, record it, amplify his voice in the room, anything like that, he will need a sound system. And to do that, we might add some loudspeakers and then a microphone and all the equipment that goes along in between, right? As soon as we have that equipment in place and turn it on, you will get some sound out of that system. And looking at the sound view on the right, you might see that you can pick up uh, a healthy amount of speech and also a good level of noise, loudspeaker, sound, uh, and reverberation. So those two are always going to be present as soon as you turn on a microphone. Now, um, obviously, that one microphone is not enough to pick up everyone. So you have to add additional microphones or additional microphone channels to pick up more people in the room. And you can see that as I do that, the amount of noise uh, kind of takes over 
and you can no longer see or hear the speech clearly. Uh, this is one of those systems that when you listen to, you hear a lot of noise and a lot of reverberation. It sounds like the person might be 25 feet away from the microphone. Uh, it's because you got basically 10 microphones picking up noise and reverberation in that room, but only one of them is picking up the talker. When you sum all those signals together, the amount of noise is significant compared to the amount of speech. So, multiple open microphones introduce increased pickup of room noise, typically 3 to 6 dB every time you double the number of microphones, or I should say 3 to 6 dB more noise every time you double the number of microphones. Uh, increased sensitivity to room reverberation, even nice rooms can sound very reverberant once you have multiple open microphones in there. You get increased audible artifacts from echo cancellation and noise cancellation and things like that. Um, just because if you're doing AV conferencing uh, or audio conferencing, you might have echo cancellers in those channels. And if they're open, you will get additional artifacts all the time. Also, you lose uh, the presence of speech due to phase canceling that occurs when multiple microphones pick up the same source. And also, if you're doing voice lift or sound reinforcement, your system will be 3 dB less loud before feedback occurs every time you double the number of open microphones in the room. You know, when you get to eight or 10 microphones, uh, your system will not be loud enough for anybody to really hear you before it starts feeding back. Multiple open microphones basically equal bad sound or poor intelligibility or both. And there's a way to deal with that. Michael? Thank you, Lewis. So as Lewis just reviewed um, some of the, the, the reasons why we use it and uh, gave some great uh, graphics there of what happens when we put multiple microphones uh, in a room and then we turn them on, um, how do we deal with that in this uh, speech-oriented application? Um, so again, an automatic microphone mixer keeps microphones that are not being addressed by the talker turned down. So we can have 10 microphones in a room with one talker or two talker uh, present. And the idea is that our mixer is only going to open up those channels of folks that are actively talking into those microphones. For the engineers in the room, uh, you'll notice in the image below that uh, this device uh, it operates post input processing. So we still have the ability to uh, equalize, <clears throat> add independent channels of AEC, noise reduction, auto gain control, and all of that happens pre-auto mix. Those are then fed into that auto mixer, and then we have our single output that will feed uh, either to, uh, to our room, to a broadcast, uh, or to the far end. Um, and again, the idea is that we're keeping the intelligibility, the focus, the presence of the person speaking uh, at, at the focal point of, of this process. We want to keep uh, every syllable, the, the sibilance of what they're stating um, to be very uh, accurate. Uh, and we're, uh, everything else is attenuated. So all other room noise uh, is kept at a minimum um, when one person or maybe two persons are speaking. Um, so here's an example uh, for folks that may have an audio background. Um, here, here would be, you know, a, a basic example of, of a standard audio mixer um, and, and how these differ uh, from an auto mixer. Um, so say that we have uh, just eight open microphones, eight persons speaking, uh, and person on channel two decides to speak. Well, in, in a normal situation, if you were to leave all eight faders open with this one person speaking, uh, by referencing the sound view on the right, you can see where the noise floor is at. Uh, and so this person's audio as they're speaking um, is potentially covered up uh, by the other folks that are, um, that are there listening to the meeting. Well, when we engage an auto mixer into this scenario, uh, our auto mixer brings down those other seven inputs where no one is speaking to allow the one person to have more gain on their microphone and reduces the overall noise into the system, thus giving us a cleaner, uh, higher signal-to-noise -to -to ratio 
uh, by using this automatic mixer. So the benefits of using an automatic mixer, um, we're going to reduce the pickup of our room noise somewhere between 6 to 18 dB. Uh, we're going to reduce the transmission of echo and artifacts back into our system somewhere between 3 and 10 dB. Um, if we are using voice lift, as in the example of that conference room with one person at the end of a boardroom table that needs to be heard over the speaker system in the room at the other end, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to leverage 3 to 12 dB uh, louder um, than without uh, an auto mixer. Um, we're also going to reduce the pickup of the room reverberation uh, for a clear reproduction of the person speaking. Uh, and as Lewis had referenced earlier, <clears throat> eliminating phase cancellation. Uh, and again, multiple microphones picking up the same person doesn't always create an additive positive uh, audio scenario. Uh, and we're going to maintain total system gain to unity. So stabilizing feedback, reducing pumping, uh, and no perceived loudness changes uh, in our system. Now, we do want to caution you that uh, not, not all um, auto mixers are created equally. Um, the technology varies from brand to brand. Uh, with certain, <clears throat> certain technologies uh, that are implemented in certain brands, uh, the activation may be a little bit late, um, so you might notice uh, the first part of words being cut off. Um, this, uh, this is obviously not what we want, especially in spoken word and communication when we're trying to uh, communicate clearly. Um, other uh, examples of, of issues um, we also have is uh, that, that are out there in product is activating the incorrect channel. Uh, the auto mixer selects the incorrect channel for the talker. Uh, so again, it results in bad sound. The talker is in the room, the talker um, may be in the wrong position. And the third is uh, activating multiple channels for one talker results uh, again in bad sound, which means you're going to, to hear the talker, but you're also going to hear a lot of the room noise. So again, that intelligence may not be there with the system. How does Sure get around this and, uh, and how do we do it better, we feel, than other folks out there? Here's a few terms um, that, uh, that we have uh, that we utilize. The first one is noise adaptive threshold. Uh, we're constantly adjusting in our algorithm the channel threshold above the noise floor. So again, we're constantly listening through all of the inputs to the average noise floor uh, in the room and making calculations uh, that, will, that will create uh, the most sensitive noise floor possible right above noise floor, uh, so that when we activate that channel for that microphone, uh, that it's very accurate and we do not miss uh, words. Um, so how do we do this when we have one talker and multiple mics? Uh, we use what we call max bus. Um, and within the, our algorithm, this allows us uh, to select the single best microphone uh, for a single talker. Um, so if a talker is seated between two microphones, um, it will be listening um, through both of those microphones that have been activated by the talker. However, it quickly decisively selects the best microphone for that talker. Now, just to, to be clear here, um, that is one microphone per talker. That's not saying that it's a one microphone on system. Um, it is one microphone per talker. So if I'm seated at one end of the table and I may be uh, halfway in between two microphones, uh, the Max Bus will select one of those two microphones uh, to open up for me. And if Lewis is seated on the other side of the table, uh, speaking somewhere same same position in between two microphones, uh, Max Bus will select the best microphone to activate for him. So you can have multiple talkers, but this selects an open mic for each one of those talkers. Now, uh, number of open mic attenuation uh, is how we maintain unity gain uh, that will help prevent feedback. Uh, and in any type of increased loudness. Um, this also attenuates overall gain as we add more mics to the system. So again, we're trying to minimize any type of, uh, of, of pumping sound uh, or any, any changes in the loudness overall. 
And the last feature, last mic lock on. Uh, this is um, a very important feature when you're doing any type of uh, broadcast uh, or conferencing. Uh, we don't want the noise to go in and out. Uh, we want to have a very consistent transition from when no one is talking to maybe two persons or one person are speaking. Uh, and this eliminates that noise pumping and the feeling of any loss of audio. Some of the popular Sure products that uh, feature uh, auto mixing, uh, SCM820 uh, is an eight channel, uh, expandable up to 96 if you need that many channels of auto mix. Uh, and that's done via the audio network, via the Dante card that's available for the SCM820. Uh, this is a networked uh, auto mixer that has uh, an A and a B output, so we can do two different types of auto mixing, which Lewis will talk to here uh, in a minute. Uh, the next one is a P300, uh, our eight channel AV conferencing DSP uh, with USB, Dante and analog IO. It's a PoE device uh, that gives you uh, some, some great processing with an auto mix um, and it pairs really well with the next item, which is the MXA 910, uh, our eight channel array mic uh, and it has a ninth channel with built in auto mixer. Uh, and the MXA310, which is a four-channel array table mic uh, that has a fifth-channel built-in auto mixer as well. Some of the applications uh, that you'll see auto mixers in that you may actually be listening to right now that you may not be aware of, um, a lot of uh, talk shows, um, any, any type of voice reinforcement for panel discussions, live broadcast. A lot of those applications are currently using auto mixers uh, to maintain consistency throughout uh, the audio chain. Uh, in smaller churches, uh, in courtrooms, uh, even council meeting chambers where the uh, facility from a technology standpoint is more of a self-serve application, uh, we want the, uh, the the company to come in and install a system that that allows the end users to simply walk in, uh, talk into the mic, turn a mic on or off, uh, and, and the system is stable, uh, has proper output and proper input control. Um, these are some of the other uh, other applications that uh, that you'll see see our auto mixers used in. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Lewis to uh, dive a little deeper into the different types uh, of auto mixers uh, that you'll find in some of these applications. Thank you, Michael. Just uh, one addition I wanted to say here is you can also insert the auto mixer as, you know, use it as an insert processor on a mixing board. Uh, and you can insert it only on those channels that are being used for speech. And that way um, you can have automatic mixing and you can still write the levels uh, on the fader if you want. That's very you know common in broadcast, talk shows, things like that. Anyway, um, there's a couple of very popular types of auto mixers, uh, gated and gain sharing. Um, the sure products that Michael discussed, uh, or most of them have both uh, built in, gated and gain sharing. Um, and they're somewhat different, so it's good to go through them. Gated auto mixer uses um, a user-defined absolute mic off attenuation. So when the microphone is turned off, it can go to whatever user value is set. It, that could typically be minus 12, minus 15, minus 18, minus 20, minus infinity, if you want it to be completely off. This typically allows for greater off attenuation of the microphones that are off basically to not pick up uh, or pick up less the undesired sounds in the room, the noise. Normally that would be best used in speech reinforcement or voice lift applications, in noisy environments or reverberant rooms. So pretty much every room I come across uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The gain sharing auto mixer uses an algorithm to activate the microphone based on the input level. So I'll read the bullet. It says, algorithm dependent relative mic on and mic off level values. This means that, let's say a microphone is not plugged into channel one because there's no audio coming in, channel one will get zero gain. 
and channel two has a microphone plugged in and it's getting ambient noise because ambient noise has some level to it. It runs that through the algorithm and it would apply some gain to it. And if channel three has a very loud talker, you know, yelling into the microphone, that channel will get full gain or the most amount of gain. So every for every input level, there is a calculated value that's applied to that channel. These mixers, uh, the gain sharing typically maintains or their target is to maintain a very constant noise floor for smoother transitions. So in a talk show and TV broadcast, uh, you know, the noise floor would remain very constant throughout the show, even though there might be one, two, three, four microphones open and there might be loud talkers and soft talkers uh, going on at the same time. And again, uh, I think I just said it, but uh, they're best used in broadcast applications, in quiet rooms, acoustically treated environments, uh, etc. So let's uh, illustrate this uh, visually. I like, I like to show everything visually. So on the left, we have the faders of a gated automatic mixer. And on the right, we have the faders of a gain sharing automatic mixer. Um, for this example, let's assume that eight microphones are plugged into this mixer, and there are zero talkers at this moment. The gated auto mixer will have one channel on from the last mic lock on, so that would be the microphone that's dominating the mix, and everything else will be attenuated to the user set of attenuation level, in this case, minus 20. The gain sharing auto mixer is receiving ambient noise and all the inputs, and it's probably somewhere around minus nine, because that's kind of the right math for eight channels picking up a similar amount of ambient noise. When one person, um, not one, but eight, let's, let's start from the eight. When eight people talk at the same time, obviously both mixers will activate all channels. So some loud talkers and some are uh, soft-spoken people. Uh, the gated mixer will activate everyone, so they're all on, but there are minus nine because it's keeping that unity gain, you know, feedback stable margin. Um, the gain shedding out of mixer is going to activate also all of its channels. You can see that the loud talkers are getting a little bit more gain than the soft talkers, and you can tell the loud talkers because it's three bigger lines, than the soft talkers, which are three smaller lines. So uh, some get, some channels are getting more gain than others, and that's based on the input level. And just to clarify this, at this point, the atom mixer is really providing very little benefit. This, this is what that will sound like, right? Uh, so it's keeping the NOMA, the number of open microphones attenuation, is keeping the system from getting louder, is keeping feedback from occurring, but Really, the amount of noise is still, you know, overtaking the speech because you have all eight microphones on, regardless of how you look at it. So the benefits of the auto mixer really are appreciated when you have one, two, or three talkers uh, only. So this is an example with two talkers, one loud and one soft-spoken person. The gated auto mixer activates two channels. They're somewhere around minus three so that you can keep unity gain in the system. Everything else is kept down at minus 20. The gain sharing atom mixer is going to activate two channels, one probably you know, somewhere below zero. The other one, because it's a soft talker, is gonna get less gain, so somewhere below the other fader. And you can see that the off channels have been attenuated a little bit more. So they were previously at minus nine, because some gain went to the on channels, the off channels are attenuated a little bit. And then when we get to one talker, um, you know, the gated atom mixer will show you, you know, zero dB attenuation on channel two where somebody's talking and everything else at minus 20. And the gain sharing atom mixer will activate that channel again at zero and all the other faders are brought down from minus nine just a little bit to keep unity gain in the system. This will probably look something like this. Um, you know, the gated auto mixer will have a little bit better signal to noise ratio for that one scenario. Um, but again, on the right for the gain sharing auto mixer, that amount of noise you see there, which is a little bit, 
lower signal to noise ratio than the gated, that noise will be consistent uh, you know, throughout the entire meeting or show uh, versus on the gated atom mixer, that could change a little bit from time to time. All right, there's some special considerations uh, when using automatic mixers, and they are typically related to how far away the microphones are from each other. So the one that really highlights this consideration is when you use like an array microphone that has multiple channels and it's being used for distant pickup. So the example here is just when we had uh, you know, 10 channels going through a manual mixer, so they're all on, and on the right you see that the noise kind of overtakes the speech. When we put that through an automatic mixer, you can see that the speech, uh, it's much higher than the noise, so the signal to noise ratio has improved, but it's possible that if you're using array microphones, the noise might still be a little bit higher than you expect. The reason for this, Oh, I was going to say, and this is especially true uh, with microphones that have multiple channels. So the MXA910, for example, is an eight-channel microphone. You can aim channels around the room, can pick up from up to 25 feet away. But it has over 100 elements, and all elements are being used to create all channels. So there is no difference in time between what one channel picks up and what the other channel picks up. So they're time aligned. All the outputs from all the channels are time aligned, which is a great thing for a lot of reasons. So if we compare uh, going from one mic to two mics on traditional button, boundary, or gooseneck microphones, you get an increase in pickup of ambient noise for approximately three dB. Growing from one mic to four mics you get an increase of approximately 6 dB. And going from one mic to eight mics, you get an increase of approximately 9 dB in ambient noise pickup. Now, if you're using a multi-channel array microphone that uses has a single pickup uh, location like the MXA910, it's closer to six. Maybe it's not quite six, but going from one channel to two channels, you might see that the noise has increases by almost 6 dB. Going from one to four might be 12, from one to eight might be 18. Obviously, when you have multiple microphones around the room, like button microphones or boundary microphones, there are different locations. So the noise they pick up is not time aligned. They're sampling different areas in the room. When you sum this, I'm sorry, when you sum this together, uh, you only get an effect of three dB per doubling because the signals are not exactly the same with an array microphone that is using basically the same elements to pick up uh, all those channels, to create all those channels, uh, there's no time difference. And uh, so the, every time you double the number of microphones, you get closer to about 6 dB increase in noise. This is not a big deal. Um, this is why we typically recommend a gated auto mixer for the array microphones, because all you have to do is set the off attenuation to minus 20 or greater. And you may want to use also a high pass or low cut filter to deal with low frequency uh, noise. I was going to point out that if your off attenuation is set to minus 10, for example, eight off channels are picking up 18 dB of ambient noise. So even though they're off, that noise is above zero. So they're still contributing significantly to the amount of noise. This is why, again, setting the off attenuation to minus 20 or greater is what we recommend. So this is how we started. Why are, why are automatic mixers key to great sound? Well, if your multi-mic sound system is noisy, reverberant feedback or is unintelligible, you might improve it using an equalizer. An equalizer will give you a uh, three to six dB better signal to noise ratio, typically helps with noise that is above and below the speech band. 
but it does uh, help on intelligibility a little bit. You can use noise reduction. Active noise reduction can give you three to nine dB uh, of noise attenuation. Sometimes they introduce some audible artifacts, so it's, they're not ideal to go, you know, uh, on the high setting, on the, you know, plus, minus 12, minus 15 dB of, of noise reduction, because then the audible artifacts become very distracting. You can cut the distance from mic to talker in half. That will give you 6 dB better signal to noise ratio. So that means if you were using a ceiling array microphone, you might need to go down to a boundary microphone on the table. So I type here, really? You know, most customers uh, want the microphone further away from them, not closer. So otherwise, we would just have goosenecks on every table, and every system would sound pretty good. Or you can use an automatic mixer, and that will gain you 6 to 18 dB better signal-to-noise ratio, depending on how many microphones you're using. There are no other solutions. So, you know, you might hear things here and there, but to make an audible difference, uh, these are really the, the most common solutions. With that, we can go into our Q&A. Great. Do we have any questions? We do have a couple, um, but not too many. So if you have any, please, please get those typed in right now because we've got a lot of time for good questions. Uh, first one I've got here. Um, so who do you, what do you think is the most viable market that, um, that auto mixers are sold to? Oof. Um, well, we sell a lot of auto mixers. Uh, one of the largest markets out there right now is, is AV conferencing. So if you think of applications that use multiple microphones in a room or a table or a ceiling or anything like that, uh, you know, there's probably a thousand conference rooms out there for every few uh, talk shows or theaters or TV studios, etc. So the most common application today for auto mixers is in AV conferencing. But, you know, that was not always the case. When I started at Sure, you know, a little bit over 20 years ago, auto mixers were very common and most often used in courtrooms, churches, uh, and broadcasts. So, great. All right. Uh, next question. Um, so, auto mixing sounds great, but um, can't we just automatically manually mute channels that are not being used? Um, good question. I, you say automatically, manually. So manually. I'm confused mm -hmm. whether it would be manually or automatically. But um, yeah, you could manually mute channels that are not being used, and it would have the exact same effect. The problem is that when somebody starts talking, you have to unmute them. By the time you realize who is the person talking, uh, you know, some words or syllables will be missed. Uh, so the trick is to get a machine or an algorithm to do this so, eff so effectively that you never lose any syllables, never lose any, wall, any words, uh, and you don't have to be worrying about that. You can, maybe you can worry about you know, the right levels and things like that, but let the mixer activate the channels. The machine is gonna be faster than you are probably. <laughs> yep. All right, next question. Um, can you set priority on certain channels to override the others when there is signal present? Um, for example, uh, from audio from video playback cuts off of, of like, excuse me, for instance, maybe audio from video playback would cut off the other mics. Excellent question. Um, yes, there is a couple of different ways to set priority. Uh, the most common type is, let's say, you tell the auto mixer to not go beyond three or four activated channels just to keep things under control. So you set the maximum number of open microphones to three. Uh, you can assign priority to, you know, the people that are most important in the room so that if, you know, they are number four, they will still activate and cut off somebody that has lower priority. That's very common practice. Um, as far as having some logic that, you know, audio presence in one channel mutes the other channels, that's also possible. Um, but, you know, not all automatic mixers uh, offer that functionality. Great. Okay, so basically similar question here. Is there a way to tailor the auto mixer to gain up a soft talker so they can be heard against a loud talker? 
Ooh, good question. So this will be a function of more like an AGC than the auto mixer. Um, but yes, that is possible. If you saw the auto mixer signal chain that we showed uh, in some of the slides, uh, ahead of the auto mixer was an echo canceller, noise reduction, equalizer, and an AGC. In the Shure processors, the AGC actually works in conjunction with the auto mixer to know which is the person that's actually talking and only act, uh, act on that channel. So yeah, a soft talker, if you have set up the AGC, um, would be gained up when they start talking. Great. Why is there a difference between um, multi-traditional microphones and a Ray microphone dB level? Hmm. So, you know, multiple button microphones distributed, are, you know, around a room or around a table are sampling different spaces, different uh, instances in that room. Uh, so when you sum those two together, uh, the signals don't quite relate one another. So when you sum them together, you get a slight bump, not a huge bump in level. So 3 dB per doubling instead of 6 dB per doubling. Uh, with an array microphone, let's say it's, a, it's an array microphone that uses four elements. All four elements are used in creating each channel that that microphone outputs. Therefore, you know, each channel is sampling the exact same place in that room. When you sum those signals together, uh, they are exactly correlated one another. And when you sum two identical signals together, you know, you end up with close to 6 dB for Dublin. Great. Okay, next question. Um, can you set priority based on the microphone closest to the talker? talker? In other words, um, can or will the closest microphone gate on first? Yes, so Michael went through, uh, through this a little bit. Um, the way that automatic mixer uh, is done, at least at Sure, is we make every microphone as sensitive as it could possibly be. Uh, actually, I, I love just throwing my fingers together, you know, three, four feet away from the microphone because that will activate the microphone uh, unless you have desensitized it uh, manually. So they're all very, very sensitive. And then we use this Maxbox circuitry to activate only the one microphone that picks you up best. So you could have three, four microphones in front of, your, of, of yourself and it will only activate the one that picks you up right. Um, so in a conference room, when you have multiple microphones around the table, you know, it doesn't matter if I speak loud and every microphone picks me up. It doesn't matter if I'm between two or three microphones. It doesn't matter where I am. When I talk, only the best microphone will be activated for my voice. Great. Okay, um, next question. In a simple system using an MXA910, is it advisable to use auto mixers for the AC function or to add the DSP prior to codec? Hmm. So uh, there is best practices and there is how a lot of people do it. Uh, they're both right. Uh, typically, best practices recommends that you connect each direct output of the MXA910 into a channel that has its own uh, acoustic echo canceller and noise reduction and then go to the auto mixer. Um, but I have come across many, many systems that are using the single output from the MXA910, the auto mix output, into a single channel of, you know, with one echo canceller, and those seem to work very well as well. I think the only difference I've noticed is uh, during double talk, sometimes the, the one using the auto mix input into a single channel, uh, might have a little bit more suppression. So during double talk, it might suppress a little bit the transmit audio uh, for a little bit, and then it kind of comes back. Um, when you have the multi-channels, um, there is a little bit better double talk performance, but they both work very well. Great. Okay, next question is sort of is about a voice lift situation. If there are loudspeakers in the ceiling, while one person speaks, how does the speaker know not to activate the mic that hears the loudspeaker? Okay, so the short answer is that it really doesn't. Um, you, you know, when the sound comes from the loudspeaker and the ceiling, uh, pretty much every microphone in the room is going to hear that, and the auto mixer will 
probably activate the best channel for that sound. Now, the echo canceller typically would remove that sound from, from the microphone audio, and that would not be an issue. Um, you know, sometimes there are tricks you can do. You can feed the sound from the loudspeaker into the auto mixer and mute that channel so that when the far end talks, uh, when sound comes out of the loudspeaker, the channel that activates is already muted. Um, you know, there are things you can do uh, that work specifically well with our Max Boss circuitry on the Shure Atom Mixers. But that, you know, whether you do that or not, it's typically not a problem. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that just about wraps up our questions. Um, if you have a question that pops into your head um, later on or something you didn't get a chance to ask, um, please feel free to send that to our applications engineers, and you can reach them at support at sure.com. Um, there's a great team here that is just very knowledgeable and can answer just about any audio question you've got. So that's support at sure.com. Um, we want to thank you so much for joining us. As I mentioned, this webinar will be available for on-demand viewing in about one to two weeks at sure.com slash training. Please feel free to visit sure.com slash training to see all of our past webinars. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you le learned a little something. I know I sure did. And we hope to see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thanks.